I guess it's working. I had a, uh, I couldn't sleep. I used to drop off my kids and I go back to sleep. I couldn't sleep. And I saw that Steel Toe was doing a show. Came up on my phone, he was doing a show. So I went to his show. I was like, oh, I just do a show. Couldn't sleep. I, I have to learn how to do it by myself. It was really easy. Yeah, Kumi is haunting my dreams. <laughs> I'm reading the chats. Kumi, yeah. I mean, there is something too to like, I can't, like these super chats get me a little like, I mean, when I'm done with them, I'm at my house, you know? Like yesterday I was screaming at Florentine or whatever. And then when I'm done, I think my kids think I'm going to fucking lose my shit when I walk out of the room. But uh, but today I just want to see how hard it was because Adam can't do Friday. So if we're going to do Thursday and Friday, Adam can't do Friday at all. I know his schedule sucks for Friday. And Thursday, I'm not sure what his schedule is. So Monday and Tuesday, I know he's flexible. Wednesday, he's flexible. But um, so I just want to see how hard it was to. So it's pretty easy because I'm already signed into StreamYard. And then I just have to basically, it's a couple of steps. I think the hard steps have already been executed. And then, um, and then I just have to, when it's by myself, it's easy. So that was really why I set up. So if it's by myself, because if it's with Chad or Adam, whatever, they can run everything. But by myself, I need to know how to do it by myself. And by myself is easy. So that's a good sign because, um, if I want to do it by myself, I, I just felt pathetic that I had to ask uh, like that Friday, two weeks ago, 10 days ago, when I want to do it by myself. And that made me fucking nuts that I couldn't, uh, that I couldn't, uh, I don't know if I can do these super chats while I'm talking. Flacca just gave me 99 cents. So I guess she was up early milking the cows. So she gave me 99 cents. It's pretty fucking bad. But, you know, what are we going to do? Flat Cat, 99 cents. Anyway, Flat Cat, you're all right. Now I can go get a bagel. No, I'm just doing it. You know, listen, I, I you know, I, I don't want to fucking uh, ruminate too much this early in the morning. But plus, I also want to see if my computer, because my computer was having problems the other day when I was just running the, uh, running the um, MLC. So um, I just want to see, because I'm in a different room. Adam said I should get a router for my computer. I'm thinking I should get a new computer. But uh, the other room, I don't know if I can connect the cord. Like, I, I don't even know that I'm using the right terms. Anyway, so uh, when I woke up early. I couldn't sleep last night. And then, I, I mean, I could I slept, but I woke up at like 5. My wife wakes up early. So... I couldn't get back to sleep. So then I was looking at my phone and this fucking steel toe came on. I'm like, I should fucking compete with steel toe in the morning. I'm kidding. But if I can't sleep, there's no point in, uh, you know, whatever. I knew I wouldn't be able to get back to sleep. And plus I'm not doing a show today. So whatever, because my son does after school stuff between four and five. So I can't really do a show. And then five gets to be, whatever. Anyway, I don't want to go into that, all that bullshit, but, um, you know, and then the uh, uh, I got kind of jealous of Levy because he, he was doing such a good show by himself the other day. Not jealous, but like, let me try to do a show. I don't have my wife laughing, and I don't have anyone running run the Super Chats. And plus, my computer sucks, so I don't even know. It's like, it's like freezes or something. What the fuck is it doing now? Anyway. Um... Solo MLC is my favorite. Listen, you guys are you guys are kind of stupid with the whole. I mean, I get so many fucking uh, complaints about Chad. Uh, here's another one. Here's a uh, from Stevie Little. I'm here for Friday, dog. All right, all right, cool. So uh, let me see if I. I don't know if these are gonna pop up or. Anyway, you know the whole thing was uh, you know. Um, Chad was like, uh, it was Levy's idea. Oh, shit. What's this morning's goal? 
Listen, man, I already made it. I already made it. I just got a bagel. I just got a bagel sandwich. Thanks to Raul Duke. Listen, uh, uh, here's the thing. I was actually on Chrissy's um, thing on Sunday. It's actually, I thought it was hard to do the Super Chats, but it's not really hard. You just kind of click. I was clicking on people's Super Chats, and then it said, do you want to give a Super Chat? And I was like, hmm? It's almost like you don't even have to. I guess I'm already linked to to my account or something, or my credit card through YouTube or Apple or whatever. So they're basically there was no steps to give to the super chat. Basically, do you want to give to the super chat? I was like, not really. And then I thought, would it be funny if I gave to Chrissy super chat? Would she even read it? Like when I have to give like fifty dollars or whatever, so I was gonna do that to be a dick, and then I was gonna do it to Uncle Rico to be a dick, and then I just chicken the fuck out. But I thought it would be like hard. I thought if I were trying to do a super chat, I'd have to fucking go to my bank account, like all the other shit you have to do, or set up a credit card, basically. So I think it's already set up. So because I was always like, man, these people are really fucking good with the super chats, and I thought it would be hard, but it's not hard at all. Anywho, so the chat thing, it was Levy's idea, you know, when we uh, when we did the, uh, I'm trying to think, that's why I'm looking away, because I get distracted by my own fucking face. So uh, when I got in a fight with Gino, like for two Thursdays in a row in October, the last two Thursdays, um, they wouldn't let us in, because Kumia was in Chicago, and then he was in Orlando. So Levy said, uh, the first one I think was in Chicago, and Levy said, let's do a live stream. I was like, yeah, 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 let's do a live stream at, at when we were supposed to be at Kumia. So then we did that, and I was like, oh, that's good. And then it, I guess it did pretty good numbers. And then uh, and then the following week, we it was Orlando. So Levy said, let's do another live stream because Kumia wasn't there on the Thursday, and they just didn't have a show as opposed to bringing us in. So... So I said, uh, yeah, let's, and then he said, have Chad come in and tell his story about, you know, not being allowed at the improv, Orlando Improv. So I said, all right. And then, because then that way I don't have to take responsibility for Chad. I don't have to be like, you know, Chad's a fucking idiot. So so it's not my fault. It was Levy's idea. It's the classic, like, it's not my fault. Oh, here's another one. Tyranny, I heard some boomer bucks. Thanks, buddy. I'm a boomer. I don't even give a shit. Plus, it's almost better now in the morning because nobody's here. My kids aren't here. My wife's not here. The only thing is the fucking cats, and I like to annoy them by yelling anyway. So uh, I'm not wearing pajamas, Flat Cat. Flat Cat says, let's see your pajamas. Anyway, so so then once Chad came in, and people hate Chad, whatever, but, like, my numbers are up. So I have to be an idiot, like... That's why I like to see Compound Media's numbers. Like, I don't want to harp on Compound Media, but but I like to see Compound Media's numbers because they must know when when their numbers are up and when their numbers aren't up. So, listen, I thought my numbers would be down from the live streams. I thought if I give the content away for free, it's like the classic, like, fucking a guy without him marrying you, giving away the milk for free. He's not going to buy the cow. So I was like, I was thinking like, if I give, if I do the live streams on YouTube, that's gonna bring down my uh, my Patreon numbers. It's common sense, but it didn't. It actually made them higher. So I was like, "Oh, that's weird." So that's why you try shit because you don't know unless you try it. So with the Chad thing, it was the same thing. I'm like, "We'll have Chad on," and if the fans like are bailing like crazy from Patreon or just in general you know, uh, fuck it. Then, uh, then we can't have chat on. Like, I I'm not going to be a slave to the Patreon, but if like, if people are like, uh, you know, bailing in droves, I'd be like, you know, no, no offense, Chad. But so people hate Chad, you know, there's between Chad and G Tr Chad and, and Gino, like Gino's doing his own show. So Gino's, Gino's a despicable fucking whatever. And everybody hates Gino. And I don't know if people hate watch Gino. People try to get me to hate watch Gino. Uh, Levy sent me a thing yesterday. You got to watch this. And I'm like, I'm not watching it. I'm not watching it. 
John Doe, don't ever question yourself, Kev. You're doing it right. Thanks, John Doe. I like how you keep yourself very classically anonymous. John Doe. Like Jane Doe and John Doe. Anyway, so uh, so the point is, you know, Chad's not the star of the show. You know, not that, not that there's a star, but like if we're if if it's me leaving Chad, like Chad's the third mic, which is fine for Chad. Because that's, you know, that's kind of like you know, there's been, you know, Opie and Anthony with Norton was a classic fucking three mic operation. So, so people are, are, are hating on Chad. They still got us. They still got, you know, and I know everybody likes Levy more than like, I mean, that's fine. Levy's a very likable guy. And, uh, and I'm not so much. I can't even hate watch Chad. That's how much I hate Chad. <laughs> I know Michelle's a longtime fan. So, I guess uh you know there are there are fans that um there are fans that'll never come around on chat. That's fine. That's fine. But the numbers weren't down. So if the numbers weren't down, so that's what I'm saying about Compa Media. Like they know, they gotta know, have some clue of like how bad Chad's numbers are. And um, I mean Chad, Gino's numbers are or Bill Schultz or even Kumia's numbers, like Kumia's numbers probably stay pretty steady. But Gino's numbers after Aaron Berg left and like like when Gavin left and Bill Schultz took his spot, like like how bad were the numbers and and you know what did they try to do to uh rectify that? You know, like Gino Gino wants people the thing with Gino, Gino wants people to hate watch him. Gino is obsessed with you know, I always say Gino's like a woman and and women love attention, you know, whether or not they deny it or not, they they like attention. That's why they, you know, women have a normal proclivity to dressing nice and wearing makeup and looking pretty. Part of it's because that's what they want. They want to look pretty, but they also want people to like notice them, you know? So, so Chad's like, uh, I mean, uh, Gino's like classic. Now the super chats are coming quicker than I thought, but that's good. That's a good problem. Isn't Chad's job to get you good guess? Kind of. I miss one after this one. Chad yelling at an ear of corn is the best. That was funny. Listen, and, and you, you you can't get mad at Chad because Chad Chad gets it. Like Chad's an idiot. Like I don't take myself seriously. Chad don't at all. And and that's the thing. Like we're, we're not sitting here. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing what Gino does and talking about vaccines and how I'm right and how. But I'll go by like the evidence. So if the numbers are bad. With Chad, I got to be like, what can I do? Chad, it's like, you know, we can have him on once in a while. But, but, and then we have people, you know, sometimes we have people that I think people are going to like. And then I'm sitting there, I can't even think of somebody off the top of my head, but like, I'm sitting there thinking, like, wow, oh, this is fucking boring. This is literally boring. So, so, you know, so Chad keeps it from getting boring. But the difference is, Chad don't take himself seriously. You know, he acts like he does, but, but he really don't. But Gino does. So that's why Gino's like a fucking asshole because he thinks he's smart. Nobody else thinks Gino's smart. Even if he has Kumia, he's not going to be like, yeah, Gino's smart. Gino's an idiot, but Gino loves attention. And that's why, you know, he's a very effeminate that way. He loves attention. And, and most guys aren't looking for attention. You know, some guys are, but most guys aren't. Most guys are just want to go about their business. Even if you're a comic, most comics don't aren't attention whores, you know? Uh, you know, there are some, obviously, like Mark Maron was always an attention whore. He was always just like, I always got a, like a bad vibe from him. Like he loves attention, you know? So, so, but like guys like Attell and, and, you know, Louie a little bit, I think, but Attell, Attell was never like an attention whore and Ray Romano and a lot of guys that just like, so, so when you deal with somebody like Gino, um, it's weird. It's a weird thing. So people are like, you know, you got to watch Gino. I'm like, I'm not, I'm, I don't, I'm not going to watch. Uh, I'm not going to comment. I'm not going to comment on Twitter because it's, it's fucking, that's what Gino wants. Like, I'm not going to say Gino's winning, but Gino wants people to pay attention to him. And, and the easiest way to drive, drive Gino crazy is to not pay attention to him because, because he's behind a paywall. So no one's really paying attention to him anyway. Right. I mean, how many people watch his show? 
Like nobody. And that's what I'm saying. Compound Media knows that. They know that Gino's numbers are probably horrific for what they pay him. Like they're not getting any bang for their buck, as they say. And I'm going to talk about Brady in a second, Tom Brady. But uh, to go ahead to head it with Steel Toe. Anywho, no, so that's what Gino wants. So I won't give it to him because, you know, I already have him blocked on Twitter because Gino on some level makes me, makes, is disgusting. Yeah, Becky's right. The worst punishment for Gino is to ignore him because it's just like, you know, if you want to really get to your girlfriend or your wife, ignore her. Like that, that makes them crazy. Like, cause that, that's, that, they can't take that. They can't take that. So, um, so that's that. So the, the whole chat thing, like, I don't want to, I'm only discussing it because, you know, if Chad's on the show, he's going to be like, oh, uh, you know, and I, you know, Chad's been a dick to me. I get it. I get it. But Chad does have like, uh, um, redeeming qualities in, in a, in a sense that like, like we shit on them, like we shit on Ray DeVito, but they, they just kind of laugh it off. They kind of get it, you know, where they don't take themselves seriously. I mean, Chad can at this point. And I mean, you know, people say the same about me. It's like, I can't take myself seriously either. And for the most part, I don't like I get, I'm, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm, oh, I'm right all the time. Like Gino says, but the fact of the matter is, uh, if the evidence is there, I'll be like, okay, the numbers are up. My Patreon numbers are up. My, my live, my, 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 uh, super chat, the YouTube money is up. So, so, you know, like I'm, telling levy and levy's wife saying i'm like it don't make sense so i have to go with the evidence i'm very evidence uh driven so if, so if i'm making money over here and it's easy to do uh and i probably like right now there's two 199 people watching so when we do a live show on kumia i don't even know how many people are watching and how many people watch on demand like i'm a subscriber to, to compound media i never watch the, the show unless something happens or or i want to watch an episode i was on to maybe uh, clip it and you know clip it like i'm always saying for becky clip it so i might clip it now the numbers just dropped to 191 i guess because i'm talking about compound media no i'm just saying you don't yeah i don't know how many people are watching at any given moment so so now i'm like i don't even know uh, you know i don't know the numbers so sometimes you're, you're at compound media you're like who the fuck is watching this? And that's when you go like, you know, I'm better off just doing a fucking live stream from my house because I know how many people are watching. I get to interact with the fans. That's another thing I didn't like about uh, Compound Media. Like the reason I want to do Compound Media in the first place because they had people would call in on the phone. And I like that aspect of it. Like I always want to do Mike and the Mad Dog which actually they're uh, they're doing a reunion show today on uh, on ESPN. Mike and the Mad Dog are like a legendary sports talk. And you don't have to be into sports. It was just a good show. Like it was one guy, you know, was kind of like a, the, the 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 arrogant. Um, Mike Francesa was the loudmouth, uh, whatever. And the, the I'm always right guy. And then the other guy, Mad Dog, was like the obnoxious uh was the obnox? You're not a real man. Go away, huh? I don't even know what that means. But uh, but he gave me nine and nine, so I got to put it up. You're not a real man. Go away. All right. So uh, is he talking about Gino? Anyway, so uh, I I just like you know listen to Mike uh, Mike and a Mad Dog when I would listen to the radio in the afternoon when I lived in New York because it was entertaining and I like sports and uh, so I didn't listen to uh, Opie and Anthony or Howard Stern because I just thought it was like. I don't know. I guess it did make me laugh or something. So I'd rather listen to people talking about sports and callers. But the main thing for me was the callers. The callers. So when I when I did uh, Burning Bridges, like the joke was that OVO Cool Cat called in every fucking show. And they used to make me nuts because I wanted people to call in. So that was part of the reason of going to Burning Bridges. But like how many people watch it live? Not enough people. Not enough people watch it live. So... Kevin, life is too short to sweat the small stuff. Life's not, life's not that short. It's pretty fucking long. I like sweating the small stuff, you know, because it's like, uh, you know, I, I the small stuff adds up to the big stuff or something. You know what I mean? Like, if you, if you take care of your business, the small stuff. I can't go into details, but, like, 
I've learned through the through the last couple of years, like do fill out your forms. Like when I was in college and shit, and and you know, I always hated out fucking filling out forms and fucking and uh, you know, like trying to get a writing job. I never try to get a writing job because you had to do those fucking uh uh you got to do a writer's packet, and I never want to do it because I thought it was like tedious and shit. Life's tedious, but you got to take care of the fucking small stuff. Even with my kids, it's like you just gotta you gotta like apply you gotta like they're in a they, they switch schools they switch schools because basically my wife just applied to a different school and I would have never done it and they're in a better school now just because she filled out the form or whatever and one thing led to another so it's like that's why I'm like yeah you got to take care of the small stuff that's why you know the I'm not going to shit on Gino or fucking whatever the whole show, but I'm saying like for Gino to act like he's always right. And then drive away Aaron Berg, Aaron Berg would have fucking stayed if Gino would have compromised a little bit. And their show was fucking, I don't know if it was great at the end, but it was great when I used to, you know, be a part of it, either watching it or whatever. Or when I first started comp, I mean, I was always like, wow, their show was like a real show. Like Gino sitting at the desk and Aaron doing all the characters. So, so you can't just go, that's one thing I learned the last couple of years. Like you got to kind of take care of the small stuff and then hopefully the fucking big stuff, uh, because that's part of life. It's just got, you got to play along a little bit and that coming from me, that's a fucking lot because I hate playing along. So that's why, you know, with the Chad shit, I kind of just go like Chad's an idiot, but Chad has a purpose, you know, on a show. And if, just even just for the fact of like people we can shit me and levy can shit on chad or like the fans can shit on chad and super chat i mean me and levy laugh at the fucking insults on chad like that morty smith guy i guess he's from europe because it's always he's always giving us weird money but it's always it's always like amusing to us so we laugh so so you know don't sweat the small stuff and and um you know, but but the point is that I, I'm off topic now. I'm distracted. But the point is that you know, Chad has a function. Uh, uh, oh yeah. So I guess the point is that that the compound meter thing. I wanted callers, so this is better. This is better for me. Even if people are just uh, chatting, there's just more activity. Like I like the activity aspect of uh, of people uh, either the super chat. Or just the live stream. Like when I'm doing the show with a bunch of people, I can't, I don't read the the, the comment section because there's too many comments and they go by too fast. But if the super chat, they're easier to read, obviously, because whoever can put them on a screen or whatever. But I like that aspect of it. Like people are interacting with it. But because at Compound Media, it got very like stale. Like I said, OVO Cool Cat was the only guy that called in and it just became like fucking, I'm like, nobody else has anything to say. And that one guy, the, the, the one guy who called in and would always shit on Mike Bushetti. That guy was fucking, that guy was hilarious. And I think he died. The, the, I forget what he called, what he called, but it's on my YouTube MLC podcast, like the clip of him shitting on Mike Bushetti. And it's fucking, it's like the guy's genius. He was, he was the way he would insult Bushetti, but it didn't happen enough. So then again, again, this is Levy's idea. It was Levy's idea to get Chad. It was Levy's idea to do the, uh, the live stream and his super chats. And so I, so I'm, I'm, I guess I'm grateful to him because it's more, it's more, you get more interaction. That's what I like. I like the inter interactive, interactive aspect of the fucking, of these shows where like, like the last show I did with Kumia, like, you know, I, I'm not going to say anything bad about Kumia, but the last show I did with Kumia, like, you know, I always, I liked it. In fact, when, when me and Levy, like after the fight, when me and Levy came back, or even even when, I, when me and Levy didn't even come back, you're the protagonist, Chad is the antagonist, Bob is the hero, classic storyline. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. So, uh, uh, so uh, no, so even when I, the show I watched, the first Monday back after me and Gina got in a fight, when I when I slammed the door and the, the whole thing shut down, Kumia's show that, that day was was really entertaining because – he was taking calls. He was taking calls from the from the fans, you know, and um, and the calls were interesting or not or funny or you know 
but it was, but that's the that's the kind of show I like. So when I was doing Burning Bridges, Burning Bridges were doing at two o'clock in the afternoon. So you're not going to get the best fucking, uh, you know, most people have a fucking job, you know, but like even at this, you could be watching this at your job. These things where you, I, I don't know if you can watch compound. I guess you could watch compound media at your job, but you can't really call in at your job, but you can fucking chime in on a, on a chat on, on the comment section at your job. So I'm just saying like modern technology combined with the fact that, you know, compound media, I don't know how many subscri subscribers they have. And, and, but the last year I did with Kumia, it was just me and him talking the whole time. I don't know if, I, don't, I guess Barry Ribb showed up at some point. So for me, that's, you know, that's not my favorite kind of show. Like I said, Mike and a Mad Dog, I was like that because they would take calls all day. And a lot of times the callers are funny and or stupid or, or, but it, but it, but it gives the show energy because if somebody calls in and they're stupid, like if you get mad, that's energy. Like me screaming, that's that creates energy for the show or anybody screaming or anybody, whatever. So I just, I just found, and now I know Gino, people be like, well, Gino takes calls. Yeah. Gino takes calls and shits on them because they don't agree with them. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I can't, I don't do it that way. I go by, I, you know, and Gino doesn't know his numbers. But Gino, you know, Gino's Patreon is down and, and, you know, no one's, you know, it's just, it's, it's, you know, and Gino will deny it. And maybe they tell Gino his numbers are down since Aaron left. And, but Gino will deny it. I'm, I'm an anti-denier. Like if you show me evidence, I'll be like, oh shit. So, so when I did the live stream and then Chad's, uh, and then we had Chad on and my Patreon was up and my YouTube was up and, you know, and Levy was making more money. And I was like, so I can't deny, I'm not going to deny this I'm, because I want to be like, no, we don't need Chad. We're better without Chad or we're better, you know, like, like, you know, Levy's always telling me, you know, do this to get your Patreon up. And then, and I was always like, I don't know. He's like, you know, do a lot. Some shows you only do Patreon only. I'm like, I've been doing Patreon only for fucking since the pandemic. I'm like, I want to open the shit up to more people. So he's like, no, I get it. But but he's, you know, him and Shuli are always thinking of like strategy. You got to do this and you put this Patreon only, you know, and, and, and as a live stream. And I'm like, I'm like, it's too much. It's too confusing for me. But this is simple. You go on live and then people chime in and, um, and then, you know, and then people fight with each other on the fucking chat. So that's all, that's all good. That's all good as far as I'm con it's concerned. Now, the, the, I, one of the reasons why I'm only putting this up because because it's like the morning show, I guess, is different than the than the night show. So I'll put it up a 99 cent. It just plus it comes up as blue on the on the uh, comment section. So but 99 cents is uh we're trying to it's not a 99 cent store. We're trying to go a little higher. Higher. I'm kidding, of course. I don't even give a shit. I'm not. I'm I'm doing this as as a goof. But the Tom Brady thing, I'll let Becky say, you can do Patreon-only live streams. I know, I know, but I don't want to because I, I, I've, been, I've been rewarding my Patreon people forever. Like, I, you know, nobody else was doing what I did where, where I didn't put out any episodes for free. I put Patreon-only for years, like during the pandemic, because I'm like, why put out for free? It's like, it just didn't make any sense. So... So I know you're going to do Patreon only live streams, but I don't want to because it's. I feel like I, now I'm giving out four episodes a week on on Patreon. So I don't think they need more, you know, incentive. So I'm trying to incentivize like just people to watch like the live stream as opposed to Patreon only. And then if we did Patreon only live stream, the numbers would be low lower. Because you're only starting with how, whatever your whatever your Patreon. What you what it, you're if you do live Patreon only, then your numbers are starting lower. And um, sorry, I gotta put these fucking super chats. I don't even know what these people are saying. Super sticker. Anyway, oh yeah, is that the same one I gave ninety cents before? No, I'm saying if you start a Patreon only and your Patreon is at a thousand. Like my YouTube is at ten thousand or nine thousand, so I'm starting at nine thousand on the live stream. If you start at a thousand for a live stream, you're gonna get a 
fraction of that. So so you just diminish your numbers. I know it's incentivized Patreon, but uh, it's like it gets too confusing, and I like to keep it simple. So you're never going to post regular videos to YouTube. Yeah, I do. I post, I post, listen, it's like, a, it's like, a, a, it's like, I try to do it like a soap opera where, where I try to, I put out, like, if you go to my YouTube, there's live, I put out shows that we did live on YouTube. I don't put them all out because, because I put them on Patreon, but some of them I put out. So it, it basically like, so if you watch them, you can get kind of get caught up on what's going on. Like the page, the episode yesterday with Florentine, I'll probably put up on YouTube in a couple of days because, you know, the, ep the Florentine episode, I want to have Florentine on because I want to explain to Florentine since he was on with Kumi on Thursday, like, like he was basically like, I'm not, I, I want to explain to him like, dude, I know you were sitting there with Kumi, so you're going to kind of be agreeing with the guy, but like, you're way off base. So I figured it was a big, uh, it was a good way to summarize the last week or so, like, like how I felt about Levy fucking paying to get up there and then not paying him and then paying me like flat rate. And was always going to be a hundred dollars for, for, for eternity. Cause I've been there like a year. I'm like, I'm not going to fucking, you think I'm going to keep working for a hundred dollars. So I wanted all that to be uh, out because we've been talking about it, obviously every show to a certain extent, but with, with Florentine, I figured that was the last time I'll really like, address it i wanted to address it to florentine and get his uh you know imp not his input but just what he was thinking and then and then i can put that on youtube so people are just getting caught up on youtube they can watch that and be like oh brennan must have gotten a fight with kumia and etc so that's how i do it i i'm not i never thinking oh i gotta i gotta reward the youtube people i'm never thinking that i'm never thinking i gotta reward the people that are watching shit for free on the live stream. I don't care because like I said, the live stream's more fun than the, than other options and um, never teach old folks to use computers. I got to get a new computer because the other day this was like acting weird. And then uh, whatever show, maybe Sunday show was acting weird. Maybe because everybody was home using Wi-Fi. Maybe that was it. Yeah, because the Sunday show, I think, because yesterday I didn't have a problem. Anyway, so yeah, so uh, all right. And anyway, who is Ski Mask? <laughs> Flight team was great on Kumia. Listen, when you're with somebody, the reason, like when I watch uh, Rogan, Rogan never challenges anybody in studio. And no one ever challenges Rogan in studio. Part of that is because you're like on a date. If it's one on one, you tend to agree with a guy more because it's one on one. That's just the nature of, of human beings. That's why. That's why you know when guys go to. Um, no. That's why. That's why people go on business trips, as opposed to calling the guy on the phone. When you're there in person. It's harder to say no. It's it's harder to say no to a guy. You're going to be your tendency to agree with a guy more if you're if you're there in person. So, Kumia, uh, my point about Rogan is, you know, Rogan gets things like you know he gets to the bottom of things. There's never a disagreement on Rogan's show. There are uh, they, they, everybody's there agrees with Rogan, and Rogan always agrees with basically with the person's there unless he knows the guy is a comic and he's like you know like a friend of his. Brendan Schaub or, or like, you know, Ari or somebody like that, or Tim Dillon, where he's like, you're an idiot. But I'm saying in general, they agree with each other because it's one on one. So, so if you're talking to Rogan and, and he, like, if I was doing Rogan, I would probably agree with him to a point. I'd probably go, you know, I'd probably uh, disagree with him. And, and then the fans would attack me, of course, on Twitter. And he might even go, you know, what the fuck I brought, you know, but it's when it's one on one. It's way harder to uh, argue with a guy, especially on a podcast. So I didn't expect I didn't expect Florentine to argue with Kumia the whole time. Plus, he didn't even know all the status of what was going on. But but when you're with a guy, you can have a tendency to agree with the guy, especially if it's just you, the two of you. Because you're like I said, you're kind of on a date. So so Kumia is saying what he's saying. And Florentine's like, yeah, you know, I mean, we do spots at comedy clubs. 
for $100 or $50 or $25. Like, yeah, and that's not right. That's not right. I mean, they underpay us. But um, but so you can't really go like, well, that's why Kumia shouldn't pay me a decent uh, or pay Levy because because comics are, are notoriously underpaid. So that's that's what that was. I didn't I didn't expect fucking um, I didn't expect Florentine to be like, you know, you're wrong. Oh wait, is this twenty dollar? Oh, it's S E S E K. Get a three thousand dollar gaming computer. Ask Neil for a loan. Ah, listen. The only time I ever think about Neil really is when you guys bring him up. I I don't really think about him. Like I do think about other people but i don't think about neil that much i mean partly because neil's not here like again neil don't live here but you know i I mean i'm not even kidding like somebody took a picture of louis ck taking a bow at madison square garden like that annoys me like that annoys me that louis ck is at madison square garden and i mean that annoys me like i i am competitive i'm not really that competitive with neil because i mean i'm a little competitive I mean, when he had Letterman on, I was annoyed. But but then since then, it's down to Bobby Lee and fucking that ginger baby guy. What's his that the guy with the red hair? I was Santino. I always forget his name. Anyway, I mean, once once he fell off the cliff, you know, I thought he was going to get Rogan and Chappelle. But I don't think they want to do a show. First of all, nobody wants to do a show where they're talking about what they're like, like what blocks them. You know, because, I mean, most people want to, like, get over their blocks. Most people, like, don't want to obsess. I'm like, oh, that's blocking me. But, again, Neil doesn't have anything to do. He doesn't have a life. He doesn't have – so so he's obsessed with his own emotions, which is a very female thing to do. That's not – I'm not saying females are bad. I'm saying, like, I, I'm – you know, I, I get wrapped up in my own fucking shit many times. But I don't want to be, like, obsessing about it or be, like – you know, I'd rather just move on. I'd rather shit on Gino. I'd rather shit on Gino than talk about what's blocking me. So, so uh, Neil's not really, I was never really, Neil's too younger. Neil's way younger than me. So I'm not, I was never really competitive with him growing up. But when he had Letterman, I was annoyed. And again, I thought he was going to get like much bigger names after Letterman, you know, and then he got Bird. I thought he was going to get Rogan or Chappelle, but I think they're, I think they're probably telling him like, you know, Rogan don't do people's podcasts and Chappelle don't either. So like I said, he's down to Bobby Lee and people can be like, oh, Bobby Lee does great on YouTube. Bobby Lee is like a non-factor in show business. Like even when they were hiring Asians for everything, like Ken Jong and all those guys, Bobby Lee didn't get a lot of work. So Bobby Lee's like a little clown and people love him because he's like a little, like everyone's little like Asian brother. You know, like if you had like a like a little pet uh, pet rock or a pet whatever, a pet comedian friend, Bobby Lee fills that role for a lot of people because he's a lovable guy. But he's not he's not he's nothing in show business. Like people outside of show business, I mean, most people in comedy don't even know who Bobby Lee is because he's not prominent. He doesn't put out a lot of stand up. I mean, I don't even think he released it. He's ever had a comedy special out or whatever. I think he just protects his material because he wants to keep doing the same jokes. So he doesn't want to have to release his, but I don't think he's ever done anything. I don't think there's, uh, there's any fucking Bobby Lee's ever done a special. So, so Neil, so am I jealous of Neil getting Bobby Lee? No. Would I like to get Bobby Lee on just to shit on Neil? Yeah. And Bobby Lee, we hired Bobby Lee for a pilot. I did like whatever year was that when i met my wife 18 years ago and bobby lee was on it and he was you know bobby lee was funny but you know we got him because he was a he was asian and oh jg what the fuck am i dreaming woke up late headed to work and kevin brennan is on yeah uh what happened jg i'll get you caught up anybody else uh adam can't do friday so i wanted to see i i thought i was set up to kind of go uh pretty good without adam's help so then i just I, i'm thinking no one's home i couldn't get I, I dropped my kids off at school i usually go back to sleep but i couldn't sleep so i'm like let me do let me see if i can do a live stream by myself without any pressure because there's no there's no no one's expecting it there's no four o'clock where's the show you know you said it's gonna be four o'clock start and so i figured i'll just try to sneak one in and see how it goes and see how uh 
So I know how to do it by myself now, and that's important. Uh, can I can I do uh, episodes where I have to send emails to people? Probably, because I don't even think that's very hard. So, yeah, so here we are. So, yeah, I've already done 40 minutes, so that's pretty good. Whenever I do a whenever I do a, a solo show, I usually do like forty five minutes. But again, this is better. This is better because, like, you know, uh, Levy was always like, the solo shows are good. The solo shows are a lot. A lot of times, I I, I didn't want to get a guest, and uh, I just want to fucking talk about something. And then it was just easier to just talk it in, into my phone, send it to Adam, and then people, you know, then there's a Patreon, and then people can't really complain. And then, uh, whatever, I was off the hook. And also, sometimes I just want to, like, talk about something. So anyway, you know, like, I am jealous of people. I am jealous, like, I, you know, legitimately that I get, I get, like, annoyed that, that when Louis C.K. sells out Madison Square Garden or, or, like, Tim Dillon's Patreon or, like, some shit where I'm just like, you know, what the fuck, man? Like, you know, I need money, too. And I, you know, so, so, but... The Neil thing, I don't, you know, Chrissy Mayer was, I guess, saying something on her show when Kumi was on about, you know, I'm Neil Brennan's brother. It's like, it's, listen, at this point, at this point, like, I'm, you know, like, before I started podcasting, yeah, I wasn't, I, I was basically unknown in the, in the fucking, in the, in the, uh, in the fucking like i kind of disappeared like i was bigger or whatever so but at this point like people be like brennan your brother's doing way better than you that's that's not even true like neil neil's more hooked up with show business but like my name comes up all the time like people are like oh louis ck was telling a story on rogan and your name came up i didn't even fucking i didn't even look at it because i don't care i mean i care i'm it's good that it, my name's coming up but I didn't care what the story was, but my name's come up on Rogan. You know, like I only said it because, you know, Rogan's the biggest show now. So my came my name comes up on Rogan all the time. So for him to be like, so Rogan can't go like, who's Kevin Brennan? Like he knows who I am. So this whole thing of like Neil's killing it and I'm fucking eating a dick. Was the pilot with Asner said in the harvest? I don't even know what that means. Anyway, uh so like uh is it the time to promote on Jim and Sam? Ian Finance is their guest again. And that's another show. That's another show. If I was doing Jim and Sam, I would take calls all fucking day. And that's why those guys are stupid. Because, again, uh, you know, they think those two guys, listen, I don't listen to the show. But if it's the same two guys talking, Jim and Sam, and then Travis jumps in or whatever jumps in. It's boring. People are boring. Howard Stern's boring. Louis C.K.'s boring. People are boring. So the reason you get calls is because you get a different take, and then you can react to the take, so it creates energy for the fucking show. So Opie and Anthony didn't need callers. Opie and Anthony didn't need callers because they had enough activity, and Opie could... or. Kumia does great characters. They had plenty of guests. They actually had too many guests, probably. They would have like five, six people, and that's that's too many. But if the, if you have two people in a studio, Jim and Sam should be absolutely 100% be taking calls all the time and reacting to the calls. Because Norton's funnier reacting to people anyway. I mean, that's Norton's strength anyway. So, so uh, we want to call. What's the number? What's your number? Anyway, everybody knows my name. That's like a joke, I think. Because turn off Jim and Sam when I see you're going live. See, I'm going to put everybody out of business. I'll put Steel Toe out of business. I'm going to put Jim and Sam out of business. And again, Jim and Sam, I, I, I mean, but anyway, I'm not going to shit on them because, you know, whatever. I got my start there. But, I mean, plus I've shit on them enough. But I'm saying that they should take calls because it's fun for the audience to listen to people calling in. Because the basically the, when someone calls in, like Mike and the Mad Dog was good. They were calling with sports takes, and but basically they're called they're representing the audience that's listening. So you're basically it's a, it serves it's a dual purpose. It gives energy to the show, and also the people calling in are are basically representing the audience, which is why you're even on the air is because you have an audience. 
So this is this is you know this is what I'm talking about. And anyway, speaking of sports, so the Tom Brady thing, somebody put a, up a mean tweet about whatever. People say uh, I complain a lot. Listen, listen. I used to watch Alex Jones without the sound on. Just watching a guy complain was funny to me. Like watching a guy that being that mad was funny to me. I got another JG. Hold on. Plus one of the ideas of taking audience calls. Just quick comments here, even the mean ones. Yeah, I'd have to talk to Adam about getting a uh, a phone number. Uh, don't become Clint Howard. I don't know what that means. Like Clint Howard to, to Ron Howard. And no, I didn't finish The Sopranos. After I, got, I was done with Cumia last week, I was like, fuck the Italians. You know, I was like, because I was kind of watching it because it had a lot to do with uh, um, the way Cumia ran his business. He was Tony Soprano. Everybody else was like a clown in his orbit. And, and I was like, and I told him, I'm like, he's, he's, he asked me, I said, I said, uh, Gino's Christopher. Well, however you say his last name is his uh, nephew, not really his nephew, but you know, whatever. And I said, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, uh, what's the guy's name? Fuck. Not Johnny Sachs. The other guy, the other guy who killed in the kitchen. Um, uh, he's famous. He's a famous actor. He's in midnight run. Anyway, somebody put in the in the fucking chat. Uh, Joe Joey Pants. He goes, "Who are you?" I go, "Joey Pants." Uh, Pantalon, Pantalon, whatever the fuck it says. And he goes, "Oh." And I, I knew I was uh, eventually I would be a fucking thorn in their side, and they would probably have to let me go because it's like, you know, I was I was I was as far as I was concerned, I was producing, I was producing more for the show than. Um, than other people and they're like no we're gonna pay you a hundred dollars forever and again every complaint on sopranos was about money like i wasn't getting paid enough or they weren't paying or they weren't uh you know the, the bosses weren't getting uh you know when paulie walnuts wasn't paying enough to 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 because he was he was having a couple dry months so it was it was always about like are you not paying me enough or or i'm getting cut out of this deal so it was always about money so so for them to act like, oh, you, isn't it great to be on the fucking show? Um, isn't it great to be on the show, on the platform? I'm like, no, we all need money. The Sopranos was all about money, eating and money. I don't know how many episodes. I got sick of watching them fucking eat. But it was all about eating and money. And obviously, you know, like the, you know, who could we trust? And you couldn't trust anybody. And that's partly with fucking, with, with, podcasting too you know fucking gino giving out my number so you know and chad fucking turned on me like you know whatever two years ago so i don't trust anybody i don't give anybody inf information people ask me questions now it shows and they go are you blah blah i go yeah i don't either i dodged a question or i'm like i don't trust and everybody's on a need to know basis the only people who need really know everything is my accountant he's the only thing that knows everything everybody else is on a need to know basis because my accountant is a fan. I got him through the show. And I know you're thinking he's an idiot, but he's not. He's fucking, he's, he's a good guy. And, and he was very helpful, especially during the pandemic. Because my other accountant fucking flaked out. So I, I knew this guy and, uh, and he's been very helpful. Plus he knows my situation because he, he watches the show or he watches, he knows what's going on. Uh, in my life, my, my, my podcast life and my personal life and my, uh, financial life so so the sopranos was a lot of was mostly about you're not kicking up enough to the bosses or the bosses are cutting fucking uh this guy out of you know and and also another thing was interesting was was like when Vito, you know when he went gay and then he and then they wanted to whack him you know everyone's and then tony was like you're gonna you're gonna take care of his family so that's another thing that that where Compromedia has no regard for is guys with family. So I'm not looking for a fucking handout, but they're like, well, we got to pay Gino and Bill Schultz. We don't have any money for you. It's like, okay, that's fine. But also I have a family to support. So if you think I'm coming in here for this shit money, when I can make more money staying home and have more fun doing the fucking a lot, the live streams with the fans, like you guys are out of your fucking minds. But I don't know how many times 
So like he had a family, you know, Pussy had a family and 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 uh Fat Vita, Gay Vito had a family. So this whole thing of like the guy goes, serial killer. Jesus, the Sopranos ended 15 years ago. Enough already. Yeah, I, I never watched it in order. I realized I only just watched it. I I, well, I started watching it was popular and then I stopped. I just I either got bored or you know came out once a week or you know, the summer comes and they don't put out episodes for fucking six months. And then you don't, you don't, you just don't give a shit anymore. The real opiate is commenting, right? I mean, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I, listen, I can't, I, I'm not going to assume anybody's anybody on, uh, on, on, uh, these super chats. I, I, I'm not going to get duped into, I'm not going to get fucking, what do you call it? Um, um, Catfish, I'm gonna get catfished. Oh, catfish, I'm gonna get oh, oh, catfished by Opie. I'm not gonna get catfished by anybody. I was, I was before I came out, I was reading uh, Owen Benjamin. Owen Benjamin's not on Twitter, but it's Owen Benjamin rep is on Twitter. So I don't know who that is. I don't know if he's really repping Owen Benjamin or if that's Owen Benjamin. I mean, when we got him on our show, we got we were dealing with Owen Benjamin's rep, but again, I don't know if that's Owen Benjamin. So I don't know if any. I don't know who's who. So so last week, Chad started screaming at Kumia. And I didn't even ask why. We were doing a live stream. And he started screaming about, you know, we had the same agent. And I was like, who the fuck? Who? And I didn't ask because I don't want to, like, I, I, just want, I just wanted to, like, let it fucking fade away. Because it, did, well, it didn't really set. But I was like, I, Chad either thought. Chad either thought Joe Dicker on me. J Chad either thought it was Kumia or it was Kumia, but I don't know if it was Kumia. I didn't know how Chad knew it was Kumia, but I don't want to ask Chad, like, who are you yelling at? And why do you think it's Kumia? Because again, like, there's an Andy Espresso on fucking on these tweets. I mean, on this, the live chat. So I, I don't know what's what. Honestly, I don't know what's what. So I'm not going to assume anybody. If somebody sends me, you know, like if dislabeled Joe, Ex I know I'm assuming he's Joe Exotic. Uh, I mean, because I just know his all his aliases, you know. And so, so many people, but I'm not going to assume anybody's anything. Like if Chad came out right now, if Chad Zumach came on, and um, if Chad if Chad came on later and is came on as Chad Zumach, I would say uh, I, I would assume it's not Chad Zumach. I mean, the only one I really trust with this is Adam. Like, if Adam, if Adam came up, but Adam wouldn't come on in the live chat, so I don't try. Like, Adam's the only one is like, I, I, I would Adam wouldn't try some weird shit in a live chat to dupe me into fucking saying something stupid, right? Anyway, the pot, the bottom line is, and and uh, listen, listen, I, I, I know I don't have to kiss anybody's ass, but the fact of the matter was. Opie and Anthony was a great show. So sh people shit on Opie, but Opie obviously had a function on a show. First of all, he was the one, he, he was the guy who put the show together. He was the one who was like, Kumia would be good, and then Norton would be good. And then, of course, like, then you're forming a band, and of course the band is going to have problems. But to act like Opie had no role, and Opie probably did get frustrated if the if the comedy got like weirder and weirder. I mean, you know, like like Opie and Opie and I mean Anthony and Co and Norton both said like the car the comedy got dark, you know. And if fucking Patrice was in there, you know, Patrice is a dark motherfucker, and a lot of these guys are dark motherfuckers. So Opie pre maybe thought like the show's getting away from us. And and whatever, but it's like people shit on Opie. It's like you're an idiot. The Opie, Opie, the Opie and Anthony show was better. Isn't it better than Kumia's show? Just because I mean, everybody wants Kumi and, and Opie to get back together because that was a better show, right? So Kumi is great, but is his show better than Opie and Anthony? Is Jim and Sam better than Opie and Anthony? Is it? No, it's not. So Opie and Anthony was the best show, and Opie created it, 
And then Anthony was like, fuck this. I'm going to do a show on my own. Is it as good as Opie and Anthony? Anthony's great. I've said it a million times. Nobody makes me laugh as hard as Anthony. But is oh, is, is Anthony Cumia's show better than Opie and Anthony? No. Is Jim and Sam better than Opie and Anthony? Not even close. Like, I like doing Jim and Sam when I'm there. I have fun. But it's like, it's, it's, it's like, it's not what, it's not close to what Opie and Anthony was. So people should on Opie and Anthony be my guest, but you're, but it's, it's like the facts are the facts. Opie and Anthony was a better show than all the other shows that, that have been spawned from that. So, and I don't like to, I don't like to get in the middle of this. I'm just, I'm just basically saying the obvious, you know, and, and to, to be fair, Kumia is, Whatever, I, I'm not even gonna, gonna go there because you know, because like I look like a bitch. I know I look like a bitch talking shit about Norton or Kumia, like because Opie's on the chat. I'm just stating the fact Opie and Anthony was the best show, it's a legendary show. So people are like, Oh, Opie sucked. It's like he put the show together, he was the f- guy who fucking who had the vision or just the common sense. I mean, you don't have to be a genius to go like. Wow, Anthony Kumi is funny as fuck. Every fucking time he's in studio, like maybe I should do a show with him. Like he's funny as fuck. Like 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 when I was dealing with Brian McCarthy, I know it's not the same level, but like I'm like this Brian McCarthy is a fucking straight up fucking ass clown. Like he he might he's he's every time he's in studio, he's an idiot. Like this is this is good content, and especially after Lenny. So again, I don't think Opie was a genius, but he's like, he saw the obvious. He saw the obvious, like, wow, every time Kumi is in studio, he's he's hilarious. So he does all these fucking impressions. Like, maybe I should make him like my partner. Like that was a smart fucking move. And then when Norton was Norton's like great with the one liner. So so then they brought him in. Then the show got away from them. That happens with bands all the time. The Rolling Stones broke up for like 20 years. The Beatles lasted eight years. Like bands are hard to keep together. You know, that's a fact. So so people should on Opie, op, Opie, people should on Opie, be my guest. But it's like the, the, the facts are the facts. Opie and Anthony was the best show. And part of it is because Opie, this is my own opinion. I don't know this for, for a fact. I Opie loves chaos. I don't know if I, you know Kumia was great when I was in the studio and breaking the thing. Like Kumia was great at that. That was hilarious, and he handled it perfectly. But I don't know if he likes chaos. And I know Norton don't like chaos because Jim and Sam don't. Nothing happens there. But I think Opie loved chaos. Opie loved the chaos. Probably until it got away from him and, and, and until the show kind of got away from him. Then he's like, this is too much even for me. But, you know, Kumi is apparently notoriously like doesn't like conflict in studio, you know. And I, I've never I really haven't seen that, but that's what people have told me. But he's always with me. He's always enjoyed me being a fucking dick. So I haven't seen it. But pe- that's that's what people say. But again, like he was great. Kumi was great when I fucking flipped out on Gino. Like he stayed at the fucking mic and he was hilarious. So, so he, so I, I, but I don't think Kumi loves the drama, but I think Opie, I think one of Opie's strong points is that he loved drama. He loved the chaos of that fucking show. And that was one of the reasons, listen, I, this, the show scared me. The show literally scared me. The one of the reasons I never try to get on was because, you know, I mean, mostly the people that got on on a regular basis, were um were were friends with Norton. That's a fact. Voss, Patrice, Bobby Kelly, Bill Burr. They're all friends with Norton. So I, I was friendly with Norton, but we were not friends. We become more friendly now because I, you know, I'm podcasting more. But I couldn't really I it wasn't like I was hanging around with Norton all the time and he wasn't I wasn't getting on the show. So I understood that. But also the show fucking scared me because you would hear the shit about the show and you're like like that's like I didn't even know Kumia. Like I would see Opie once in a while, I guess, at the comedy cellar. But like the show scared me. I was like, I don't know if I can even fucking hold my own at that fucking show because it just seems so fucking chaotic and so mean spirited. But that's why the fans loved it. 
But Opie created that. Opie, that was Opie's fucking, uh, you know, again, he's not a, you don't have to be a genius to go, wow, Kumi is fucking great every time I bring him to the studio and when doing they were doing this show in Long Island. I guess, you know, Kumi would come in and then they're like, let's let's become partners and then try to sell this. And then they went to Boston and, you know, the rest is history, obviously. But like, you know, Opie, Opie was smart enough to go like, let me, let me partner with this guy. And then they were smart enough to bring Jimmy in. And Jimmy was good because he knew all the comics. So he'd bring all these comics in. Mostly that were friends of his, but like, listen, I wasn't begging to get on the show because the show made me fucking nervous. That's how big their fucking reputation was. Do people get nervous going to Jim and Sam now? No, it's like going to a fucking sauna. And I, I like the show, but it's very relaxing. You don't get nervous going into the thing. And even when I first did Opie and Jimmy, I was nervous because I was like, I've just heard so many fucking, it, the, the, their reputation was so large, even without Kumia there it was so notorious that I was like, you know, I was like, okay, try to bring your fucking a game. If I, I didn't even know I had an a game, but I'm like, bro, when the first time I did Opie and Jim, I'm like, bring your a game. If you have one, bring it. So, uh, but, but in the old days, you know, I mean, Patrice was always mean and it was just like, and I was just, I was intimidated by the show. That's how fucking great the show was and notorious it was. But again, Kumia doesn't. When you when I first time I did Kumia, I didn't know Kumia, but I wasn't. I was a little intimidated, but it's not. It, but it's just Kumia, so you're. It's you know, it's one on one, so it wasn't as scary. But anyway, I, I'm just saying, people, sh you can shut on Opie all you want, be my guest, but it's like he was the one that's like, let me let me bring in fucking uh, and and like I said many times, Opie's not as fun as Kumia. He's not as funny as Kumia, but like nobody is. Kumi is like the funniest guy between the characters and just him being funny. Like nobody's funnier than Kumi. Is. So of course, Opie is also not funnier than Kumi because nobody is. I mean, a tell might be funnier than Kumi, but it tells a mess. So, so this whole thing, Opie's not as funny. I'm only saying it because you guys say Opie's in the chat. I don't even know if he is, but I've said this on my show many times that, but, but that's, that, those are the facts. Opie's not funnier than Kumia because, like, nobody is. And Norton, no one's as quick as Norton. So it was, is Opie as quick as Norton? No, nobody is. Nobody's quick. When I used to do Opie and Jim and Norton would, like, have a one-liner, I was like, what the, f I, like, how does, at 7 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, how does he all, how does he think that fast? So yeah, Opie wasn't as funny as Norton or Kumia, but these guys are like the fa quickest and the fastest guys. Even if it was, even if it was for one episode, if you had Opster on, it would blow up huge. Yeah, I can't listen. I don't want to get involved in the domestic. It, it, he, Steve Lou's right, but but. You know, I, I mean, I, I listen. I'm a fan of Kumia. We hang, we've hung out. We, you know, we make each other laugh. Him more, more. I he makes me laugh more than I make him laugh. That's a fact. Because because I've watched episodes of when I do the show, and I'm like, we're all being funny together. And I watch the show, and I'm like, yeah, Kumia is way funnier. He gets way more laughs than I do. So I'm thinking like it's maybe sixty forty, but it's not even. It's like more like seventy thirty. And so, uh, so like we're friends, we, you know, if you do a show with enough guys, I mean, I, I don't like, you know, like I, like Levy's going to tell Kumia probably when he sees him, if he sees him this weekend, that Brennan don't have a problem with you with Kumia. He has a, he, he probably has a problem with E-Rock and getting paid a hundred dollars for the rest of eternity, but he don't have a problem with, uh, he don't have a problem with Kumia. Like Kumia makes me laugh. So a cum, like a like a tell, I don't like a tell. A tell's a fucking dick, but a tell's made me laugh so many times in my life that like I'll never really not like them. So even if I really ha like, even if me and Kumia really had a f bad falling out, which we really didn't, I just said I'm not coming in for a hundred dollars, and he was like, and then I s said they're cheap, and they are. Uh, like I'm never gonna be like I don't like Kumia. Because Kumi has made me laugh too much, and I've hung out with a bunch of times. Same with Attell. Like I used to hang with Attell like all the time. So for me to go like I don't like Attell, 
Like, I can't do that. I can't pretend like I am. Plus, it's like, it's stupid. It's just stupid to be like, I don't like, I don't like, uh, you know, that's something Gino would do. Like, I, he's dead to me. Like, I'll always like Attell. Attell's, I've hung out with Attell a million times. He's hilarious. He's made me laugh a million fucking times. And I don't, I haven't hung out with Kumi as much, uh, you know, hanging out like at, at bars and hanging out like that. But I've done a, sh- I've been on the show so many times that there's no way I'll ever go. I don't like Anthony Kumi. He's just funny. He's made me laugh a million times. Like, go to my YouTube. Like I'm howling and, I, and I'm never fake. It's never fake. It's it's a hundred percent when I'm, my face gets red and I'm pounding the desk. I'm like, literally that's a, that's, that's not embellished at all. Like I'm literally laughing so much that I like, I'm not even making a noise anymore. And like that one show when we did the football show, and uh, I don't even know if that's on YouTube. I think it's somewhere on YouTube where I'm basically saying like, I'll never have a better time than this. That was true. I knew that. I was predicting. I was predicting it. I was crazy drunk, but I was still sober enough that I was like, I was getting all the jokes. And I was, I said, I said like basically, and I could have been killed on the way home that day because I left my jacket there, which I never do because I'm fucking OCD. I I never leave anything behind. But I left my jacket there. I could. I was so drunk. I didn't even know what the fuck was happening. But um, I but I predicted that. I'm like, if if I don't make it home, uh, tell my wife this is the best time I've ever had. Whatever the fuck I was saying. And I was like, literally, that was literally true. Like me just laughing. I I did like three shows or four shows. I did Kumia show. I did Chip Chipperson that day, and then I did the football show. We did. I did like six straight hours with Kumia. And by the, I was just, I was like, l- just laughing the whole fucking time. And I'm, and that's why I said, like, I've never had a better time than this. I was, I, you, I, it's, it's on the, me saying that on the show. If you want to look it up on the Compound Media website, compoundmedia.com, I'm still plugging that. That's how, what's, that's what a good egg I am. All right. So I was going to talk about Brady for a second, but I guess I don't have to. But, um, the, the point is with Brady, I think he found, the hard way. I just I don't want to name drop, but when I separated from my wife, um, Opie is low key hilarious in the chat. Pretty sure it's a real Opie. All right. Well, I think I have Opie's number. I think he gave it to me one time when I did a show, and he he was in the elevator. He goes, "Give me your." I, he said, "He said you don't have my number." I said, "I don't think so," because I think I had a call. Um, I think I had a call through the show because I want to come up when I one time to use the bathroom and I had nothing to do. It was like four o'clock in the afternoon. There was only the, the afternoons and that. So I called up on the hotline and cause he wasn't responding. So I, whatever. Anyway, so I called up on the hotline and he's like, he goes, just text me next time. I said, I don't have your number. So I think he gave it to me. That was when I, I, I said, I had to use the bathroom. Can you let me up? Because, you know, you got to buy something in the New York City to use the bathroom. I said, just let me up so I can use the bathroom. And, you know, he thought that was funny. Of course it was. And then uh, then he's like, well, come in. So I did the show. And then anyway, so um, so I was going to say about when I separated from my wife, like we're not separated still. Part of the reason is because when you have kids and you get separated, it's fucking it, – women get really mad when you fucking – say i don't want to be your husband anymore and 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 when i got separated i was talking to louis ck you guys know him right i'm name dropping but that's what happened because you know i was just sitting at the comedy cellar upstairs at the olive tree and and uh so i i hadn't been i moved to la for three years so i didn't really see louis that much when he was blowing up so then when i got back he was kind of he would like if he was if i was sitting at the table he would sit down with me because i guess he you know i've known him for a long time and as opposed to sitting, you know, I wasn't going to be like, oh, Louie, you're famous now. Like, let me fawn all over you. So I don't know if that's why I did. But, it, but anyway, he, I was telling him, like, we got separated. I was separated from my wife. And he's like, uh, he basically said, it's going to, he goes, he said, he, Louie said, Voss told him when Louie got separated or when he got divorced, he said, they're going to keep moving the goalpost. He said, your wife will keep moving the goalpost we'll keep moving the goalposts, which, which means, you know, they're going to make it a fucking hell on you. So, so when, so when you get divorced or separated from your wife, they get really mad, especially if you have kids, they get really mad 
and they try to make your life like I don't think I don't think if they do it consciously, they try to make your life fucking miserable. You know, so so you're like, oh, can you watch the kids today? Because I have a gig. No, it's your day. It's your like they're they're very non uh, compromising and very like basically that was the gist of it. And that was that was I was get I was catching that too. Like my wife wasn't completely like because we weren't divorced. We were separate. I lived right up the street. So I was uh it was I was close by. So it wasn't impossible. You know, it wasn't an impossible situation. But you know, when you're a supermodel and then um and Tom Brady's like, Yeah, I don't want to be with you anymore. And she's like, Go fuck yourself. And so she probably made his last this last year a living fucking hell because all the other times, um, all the other times when she, he needed her to watch the kids, she would do it because they were married. So you, that's what you do. You help each other out just for the sanity of the fucking marriage. But, um, but, um, I got distracted. Somebody said, drop Chad and get Opie. Yeah, how much would I have to pay Opie? Anyway, so uh, no, when Tom Brady in the past, he had a stepson too. Not a stepson, but as uh, Giselle had a step. Wait, not a stepson. I don't know. It was Tom Brady has three kids: two with Giselle, one with that actress Bridget Moynihan. So, but but Giselle would watch Tom Brady's other kid too. She would be. She would go to football games. She would bring the three of them. And they would be in the stands watching him. So when things are going good, yeah, it's it's easy to manage your life. So I think what so, but now it's like she doesn't watch the other kid. Uh, he has to, you know, when it's his day to watch the kids, he can't do anything else. And it's like he realized, wow, this is fu- this sucks. Like I can't be a football player with and the, and do this. He probably just realized, like. You know, because you think, because, because, like I, like Louie and Voss said, they probably, she probably keeps moving the goalpost because she's pissed. You know, women, when you fucking like women scorned, what is that? Whatever that expression, she's fu- and she's a supermodel, so she's probably like, "Fuck you," and and so he's like, "I can't, I can't be a fo- I can't be a quarterback," and and be be separated or divorced because uh, there's too much fucking. There's too much juggling now before she took care of everything. And that's probably what she was fucking like, fuck you. Like you're going to play another year. And and I, now I got to fucking, I got to do this for another year. Like watch the kids all the time. Cause you're, you're doing, you're at football, you're a camp or you're fucking, you got to do this. You got to do that. And so, so, but I think he learned the hard way where it's like, this, this sucks. Like being, I think being divorced sucks, being separated sucks. Like if you have kids, it's, it's just, it's just, first of all, you feel like you let your kids down, probably. And then second of all, it's like there's all this organizing shit. But if you're like high profile, if you're a regular loser, it sucks. But I think if you're like high profile and you're used to being Tom Brady and, you know, and always being able to do what you want because your wife will pick up the slack with the kids or whatever. And then once once that's done, you're like, this is fucking exhausting. This is like, hey, you know, he didn't have a good year. And everybody knows. And if he tries to do it another year, it has another shit year. I think he just tried it. Like, like, like I want to have another year. And she's like, fuck you. And then, and then, but I'm guaranteed once he starts playing football, they'll have a better relationship. Like she'll just be like, but she was pissed. And he probably realized, um, Chad is bad. He is sad. Was beaten by stepdad. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good poem. For ten o'clock in the morning, it's a pretty fucking good poem. So I think I think uh, once he quits, she'll be like, she won't be such a you know what to him. I don't want to fucking say the bad word at ten o'clock in the morning, but uh, she won't be such a you know what to him. And um, uh, yeah, so uh, because she she was pissed and she was like not going to help him. And then in in the past, she probably did everything so he could fucking concentrate on football and then once he uh and but then gronk retired and uh you know he just lost it, it, so he's probably like i'm not gonna fucking i'm not i can't i'm not gonna do this another year i'm getting older 
uh, my wife's my ex-wife is just going to become more furious she's going to make it harder and harder to fucking uh to pull this off and so uh so he's like i gotta it, like again i think he would have if, if it was up to him if he could play he, he would play but i just think he was like it's not worth it it's like everyone's pissed is you know his is his kids are probably now they're probably not pissed but the his their their mom probably talks shit about him you know they that's what they do they can't help it if they if, if you know if his name comes up she's probably like she's you know she's not she's probably pissed so it, it then it spills into them and then when they see him he feels like a fucking you know he he takes him out to get ice cream on sunday and he probably feels like a fucking failure regarding that that they they don't have a family unit and shit. So so I think he was like I tried it. It was a complete fucking abysmal failure. He still made the playoffs, but it but he's like to do it another year, I'd have to be a fucking lunatic. So anyway, all right, so I'm going to sign off. And uh thanks for the super chats. Thanks for listening. Uh I didn't know how I literally did as a test show. I guess it went well. I'm going to hit end broadcast. I think it saves it. Uh, if it doesn't save it, then I can't put it on Patreon. If I can save it, I'll probably put it on Patreon. Maybe I'll put it on uh, YouTube too. Not right away. I got to make people wait. But that's good. Chad is sad. Chad is bad. He is sad. He was beaten by his stepdad. I got a screenshot. Can I screenshot that before I fucking hang up? Because I'll forget it. I'll be like, I'll tell Levy and I'll be like, what did he say? I'll be like, Chad was mad. He was he was wasn't glad. I'm a fucking idiot when it comes to remembering shit that's uh, supposed to be funny. All right, so uh, yeah, support the troops and uh, and uh, yeah, maybe I'll do it every day to put Steel Toe out of business. God bless America, and thanks for watching. <laughs>